Welcome to Conversations with Women Living Well After 50. Now today, before we start the conversation, just take a walk through your home. Have a look around you. Do you feel calm and at peace or do you feel stressed and anxious? Our home should be a refuge. It should be a place for us that we can escape the world to relax and enjoy life. However, having clutter and being unorganised can have a negative effect and impact on our mental and physical health and well-being. It can also affect other areas of our lives without us even realising it. Have you ever walked into a room, it's all cluttered uh, or a cupboard that's having everything fall out of it, you just shut the door, walk away because you just can't face it. So if you've got an issue with uh, clutter and being unorganised, especially at home, my next guest may have a solution to help reduce the stress and anxiety and bring calm and peace to your home environment. I'm delighted today to introduce my guest, Angela Agronoff, the Unclutter Angel, who helps organise heavenly spaces in earthly places. Angela offers solutions to end the frustration of being unorganised and gives her clients the encouragement to move forward to take action with their organising projects to restore order, find calm and create a peaceful environment to live in. So let's go join the conversation. Well, welcome Angela and it's so lovely to have you join me today because we're going to be talking about a topic that I think many of us um, struggle with and I know myself, I recently, or probably about a year ago, had to go through all of my mother-in-law's house to, um, because she'd sold it, she was moving into aged care and I think she'd kept everything she ever owned for her 90 years. So you can imagine that it was a, a huge um, job that we went through. So it's lovely to have you here today to share your knowledge with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so let's just start. I'm obviously, I'm in my 60s and my husband and I have downsized to a simpler life and many, many people are doing that now at all ages. Um, it seems to be a popular trend. So why do you think this trend of downsizing and minimalizing our possessions is happening these days? Well, and I think you hit on it when you were talking about your mother-in-law, where I think in a, in a different time where it was, a lot of people would keep things. It was about, you know, legacy and passing things down and, you know, not wanting to let go of even like furniture, you know, just valuables and all sorts of things, as you probably <laughs> know from going through everything. Yes. Um, I think that was very popular at one time. And I'm kind of wondering, because my parents, you know, went through that when their parents had passed. And I saw what a big challenge it was going through everything. Mm. So I feel like there's been kind of a shift into letting go earlier because they've, they've gone through that experience with their parents. And I really appreciate that um, with my parents, thinking it's not going to be probably as much of a task as it was for them. But I can see with empty nesters, you know, you, kids move out, the kids take the stuff with them. You know, people just want simpler lives. Yeah. But I also have read about how millennials are having even total shift or just a, a different perspective altogether or even in, in my generation where it's like we don't want any of the stuff that you want to pass down we just we That's don't want right. the yeah we don't well, want the furniture we don't we really don't want to buy a house we don't want debt we don't want a credit card no well that's very true too because we actually asked all the family you know before we donated things or went through the whole process and we said, look, is there anything you would like? And no, we don't want anything. And, and you know, they took a couple of little mementos just, but nothing that uh, only to remember uh, their grandmother by, but um, they didn't, you know, the furniture was old. They, it just, 
didn't fit with their lifestyle. And I think that people are very busy today too and they like that calming effect that the minimalist style environment um, provides. So I've uh, been having a look at your website and, and picked up quite a few tips, which was really good. Um, and I've looked at the services you offer, but what was the catalyst for you to actually become the Unclutter Angel? Well, the Unclutter Angel was founded back in 2012. And I actually started organizing, I think at a very young age when I was very little, I loved the whole idea of organizing. And then like in the mid 2000s, my children were small and I was doing a, I don't even know if it was called Google search at that time, but I was like, there's such thing as a professional organizer. That sounds like so much fun. And I would go into people's homes and actually physically help them, you know, get organized. But realizing that, you know, my kids were younger and then I'd go home to the kids or trying to coordinate between school. I'm like, this is not going to work. <laughs> So I brought in 2012, brought everything online and just started writing about decluttering and getting organized. I've written a few books and started blogging and, and absolutely loved it. And it's kind of transitioned now just in 2020, maybe the end of 2019 and talking to an organizing friend where she mentioned, you know, remember you were talking about the whole virtual organizing thing, you know, maybe this would be a good time to think about doing that again. Because when I tried it years ago, people didn't quite understand how we could coach online. No, but I think that the last six months has taught us all, you know, new skills in that area, hasn't it? I mean, we have been under in isolation with COVID-19 and mm -hmm. it's the perfect time really to go through a, a decluttering process as well. But I think we're also getting used to this face-to-face -face, but being in a virtual uh, situation rather than a physical one. And um, for me, I don't really see the difference. I just feel that you and I are having a chat together now and uh, I really think it's, it's great. So people are embracing that virtual um, way of communicating. Yes, I agree. I think that was the one positive thing to everything going online because finally the, the vision that I had had years ago finally was starting to make sense. I didn't really have to explain it to people. It just made sense because everybody's meeting online and I had decided to create this nice little beta group um, during, you know, during this time and mm -hmm. work with a bunch of women. And it was just, it was beautiful working with a group of women, helping them get one room organized and having, you know, creating this coaching system, meeting each week and supporting each other. And it, I saw, you know, this really does work and it gives people a lot of flexibility too. So when COVID's all over and we, you know, kind of go back to our whatever normal is. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, people will still see that this makes sense. You know, you can coach and have flexibility and still get organized and um, using the clutter strategy. So yeah. kind of a long answer. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's fine. But um, you've also been through your own journey, haven't you? And you've mm -hmm. discovered through that uh, and that experience that there's two elements to uncluttering that really are the key. Um, so can you give us a little bit of background of what they are? Yes, yeah, so when I was talking about how in the beginning I was going into people's homes and helping them get organized, what I realized was when you're there, you have this very specific amount of time and you are trying to stay focused to get this project you know, complete it because they're really expecting that when you're gone, for the most part, you'll see progress and then they may have homework, but it's just really about, you know, the cleaning and organizing. And I felt like I didn't have the time to really chat too much with them mm. what's behind the clutter or what's behind the project because I always felt like there was just more to it. So I have found through working with clients and especially the writing, the more I write, the more I understand that there are two elements. So there's the actual clutter um, strategies 
that, that I teach or I use with my clients, mm -hmm. but then there's also the inner work, meaning just the mindset around maybe why somebody is struggling to get organized or maybe why it's difficult for someone to let go um, of things. Maybe they feel overwhelmed. Maybe they feel shame and it really um, keeps them stuck. So it's those intangible things that stop you from managing your clutter and the way that you want to. And one tool that I use that I absolutely love, it's called EFT, the emotional freedom techniques. Mm -hmm. Some people call it tapping. Yes, I've only recently heard about that. So did you want to tell us a little bit about what it is and how it works? Sure. So EFT, the emotional freedom techniques, also called tapping, it's basically like psychological acupressure. So you're really physically tapping on meridian points on your body. So instead of getting, you know, a needle, um, you know, in certain spots, you're just tapping on certain spots. And what this does is it just kind of um, helps to make a shift in your thinking. It just... Um, when I work with clients, I see just kind of thoughts that shift, energy shifts. It's very calming. Um, it's very easy to do. And I just, I think it's awesome to see the changes in perspective after working with clients. So a typical session for me would be, let's talk about clutter strategies. And then the second half of it is, now let's talk about maybe you know, the inner work, what we need to do to help you move forward, or what is it that you're stuck with? And we'll hone in on those thoughts and feelings and use the tapping to kind of break through some of those thoughts that they feel stuck in. Mm. Yes, because I know that a lot of people, they probably don't realize there is a, an inner aspect to it, that, you know, um, and, and your mindset plays an important part. That feeling of, um, and I know I've done it myself, I've thought, okay, I'm going to uh, go through everything and declutter and, and just have the things that I really need. But there'll be something that I'll come across and I'll go, oh, I don't know if I can really give that away or throw it away yet. And you know, and then we bring the emotional side in. This is very sentimental. I don't want to get rid of it. And so then, of course, we don't, we just walk away and we don't end up getting rid of anything and we just leave, you know, stay where we are. So um, how do you get through to someone who is having difficulty in trying to let go of the material possessions that they have? Well, that's a great question. And when you had mentioned a few minutes ago about my own journey, that journey also includes things that I've gone through just with my own mm. decluttering. And what I love about that is I try to be very transparent in my writing. And when I write, sometimes I will tell my own stories or I try to connect with, you know, specific emotions like you're ta talking about with letting go, because I totally understand that because I to have some things that I kind of start to question, you know, because I am kind of a sensitive soul and there are some things that I totally understand that are hard to let go of. But I feel like that's what helps me to connect with people mm. on a different level because I can write from the experiences that I go through. So what I usually suggest for people is obviously the tapping helps because it helps us literally to tap into what those thoughts are. What is it that you feel like that's a, why you're attached to something? So whether it's because it was a family member's, because it's the guilt of letting it go, because it's, I spent money on this and I feel like I'm wasting, you know, there's a lot of different emotions and to be able to tap through that to kind of get to the core of what's holding them back um, is very helpful. Another thing that I suggest is journaling. I love to journal and just to get all our thoughts down on paper as to why you feel stuck or why this decision is hard for you and just to get it out on paper and not edit yourself or overthink about what you're writing. Mm. Just get it all out on paper because you may write some things that you would have maybe never admitted to yourself or you kind of 
somehow edited in your brain. Um, but I find both of those tools to be super helpful and, and also just to be gentle on ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're human beings and we love our families and we love our memories and it's sometimes just hard to let go. So I know yeah. that there's some shows on TV where it's like, we are going to, we're going to organize and we're going to get it done in 24 hours and we're going to empty all your stuff out onto the lawn and you're going to have to make decisions in two seconds. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching these people's faces. They're like traumatized. Yeah. And I don't see how that's helpful because they're not really working on the issues of what got them to that point. Yeah. And I like to kind of work through what got them to that point so that then they can stay organized mm. in the well, future. That's right. And what I've done, like my husband and I, um, he is, has always been a minimalist. Now, whether that was because he spent 12 months in Vietnam, in the war, mm. in a tent and didn't have anything and then he's just sort of come back and thought, well, like, if I've survived that, I don't need to, um, I don't need any position. So he's very minimalist and I was always one to have a, I must admit, a bit of knickknacks and clutter everywhere we traveled i'd buy little souvenirs and things like that and then one day i just suddenly came around to his side of thinking and thought you know what i don't really need all these little bits and pieces but there are a couple of things that i will never give away and i'm sure you'll find that with clients as well um, one is in particular is it's just a little trinket box um, but it was the last thing that my mum gave me before she passed away. And um, she had cancer and I was taking her to her regular chemo treatment. Mm. And she gave me this little box and she said, I want you to have it. And I said, well, that's fine, but you know, I can get that later. We've got to go to the appointment. And she was quite insistent. She said, no, I want you to have it and I want you to take it now. And she didn't come home from hospital and uh, what turned into chemo treatment turned into heart attack and then being in hospital for a couple of weeks and then passing away. And I will never give that away because that's my last link with her. And she died when she was 63. So that's 30 odd years ago. And it's something, so it's, it's only small, but it's something that I won't give away. And I think, do you know, do you find that with clients, there are just some things that they just cannot let go of. And so you find a way to incorporate that into their life still. Oh, absolutely. And I know I'm probably maybe a rare organizer that I, you know, like we were talking about before, it's like, I can't imagine like forcing somebody like to, to do that because yeah. to me, it's just, it's about creating a space that makes you happy that you function in well. And that is different for everybody. So mm -hmm. for some people, it's way more stuff than other people. But for me, that is not for me to judge. No. So as the unclutter angel, I just want to make it so that people feel at peace in their space. I mean, obviously, le having less, it's less to manage less to store, less to clean, that's all good. But maybe that's not how some people want, you know, they want to keep more stuff. So I think it's whatever works for you and that brings you joy and it's special to you. So mm. why would you want to get rid of that? That's no, no, but uh, I, as you say, there are those television shows and, and other um you know, advice that you're given where you, you practically have to just gut everything out of your house and have nothing in it. And, um, and I think that your home has to reflect a little bit of yourself, but also, as you say, it's your space. You want to be comfortable and you want to be able to relax and feel calm within that space. So I want you to tell me a little bit about your unclutter camp. Is that a bit like a boot camp? <laughs> <laughs> an online boot camp. Well, thank you so much for asking. It is. It's based off of the beta class that I had over the summer. And what the camp is, is it's four weeks 
um, where women work with me, the clutter coach, in getting one room organized. And it's great to have that one-on-one -on -one session so you can get personalized clutter strategies as well as EFT if you choose. It's not mandatory to have the tapping as part of a session. But then you also have a group of people online, you know, other clients where you can have accountability, support, you can share wins that you have, you know, ask questions because I, I don't want somebody um, to ever feel like in between sessions, they're alone mm -hmm. and they get stuck. And mm -hmm. that was something else I had learned, you know, going into someone's home is you leave and they're, they're left with all this stuff and maybe not feeling fully supported. So I like to be able to offer to have that support in, be, in between our, our sessions together. So it's really simple and it's very encouraging and I like to make it very personal to each client. And I, I was really impressed with the success from the beta group and what these women were able to accomplish. And just, it was, it was a lot of fun. Mm. So it's not dreadful. No, <laughs> getting, it's, getting not like, you know, it's not like boot camp and burpees and push-ups. Uh, right. Yeah. But I think it's, it's also good too because you've got someone holding your hand. Sometimes that's what we need, someone to just say, now, come on, it's not that overwhelming. We can do it. Let's just start bit by bit. So um, if someone was looking around their home today and they say, oh, I just want to do something small, what would your, to get started, what would your three top tips be to start creating a less cluttered space and one that's a little bit more inviting. Sure. So we had mentioned even just the idea of having less stuff. So that would be maybe not bringing as much stuff into the home, maybe thinking about purchases, um, letting, being able to let go of things. So I've said, if whatever you want to keep, whatever brings you joy, do that but also be open to letting go hmm. because you might be surprised what you can let go of and what would open up some space. So really the first thing is to open up your mind to having less. Um, the second thing I would suggest is if you want to get uncluttered is having some accountability, like making a plan, just making the decision, you know what, this room is not working for me. I'm going to make the decision to work on it and maybe have a little bit of accountability, whether it's a friend or a family member that you just kind of keep in touch with each other and cheer each other on, or even a, a clutter coach or whatever works for you. And then um, the last thing I would say is just to maybe set a timeline, but make it really realistic. So mm -hmm. when I talk to people, like on my Facebook page, I have an accountability, you know, each day. And sometimes it's just, what can you do for five minutes? What can you do for 10 minutes? And that way you don't get overwhelmed. It doesn't feel like you're up to your eyeballs and boxes and stuff, but you know, it'll take a little bit longer and you mm -hmm. see organizing can take a little bit longer than we think. But if yeah. you do it in those little small steps, it probably feels a little more doable mm. than I am going to crank this out in a weekend. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. And then you sort of think, oh, too hard, throw it all back, shut the door and walk away. Right. Um, but I did notice on your Facebook uh, each day, and I just can't remember the names that you have. Is it, a, was there a wipe at Wednesday or wipe down Wednesday or something? I have had a look. So did you want to just quickly talk about that in your Facebook group? each day what you what you do sure so anyone's welcome to to join i have a page and it's uh if you go to my website you'll see a little bar at the top where you can join the page and each day i just love to have some kind of encouragement to help people to just take tiny steps in their projects whether it's um let's see i think it's like you know i have manage it monday or make it happen monday yeah. tidy up tuesday wipe it down wednesday and just to, just to keep the project small. So I've noticed some of the people that comment on these, these are people that like work all day, but they still feel like they can come home and just do that tiny little wipe down or tidy up 
And it's really fun to see how it's helped people. I've gotten some great emails from people that have followed me all these years and yes. made projects, uh, progress just on using that accountability. And the thing is, you just feel good after you've achieved it, don't you? And, and even if it is just wiping down the kitchen, you know, you, for someone who's busy and works full time, they've got a family and then they come home and they've got to do dinner and all of that. Then if they just take those few extra minutes to perhaps tidy the kitchen before they go to bed, I know that when you wake up in the morning, you think, oh, that looks lovely, you know, and you can start your day really well. Whereas uh, if you've got, you get up and you've got all the dishes and everything in the sink and everything's a mess, it really can be, you know, not a great start to your day. So I love that idea on your Facebook group and I'll be putting all your links into the show notes so that people can contact you and, and get some more information. Well, so you. I've really enjoyed our conversation today, but before we go, um, I did want to ask you a question that I ask all of my guests. And what I love about this is that everyone that I speak to has a different interpretation of the question and it's um, I just learned so much uh, from the women that I'm meeting and that's a, a bonus for me so I'm a bit selfish in doing these interviews because I get <laughs> to meet lovely women and I get to learn as well from them so the question is what does being a woman living well mean to you that's a really good question I think living well means doing the best for me, um, living for what's best for me, what's best for my family, and living for my faith. I think those three are, are my top, but also the gifts that I've been given to, to using those every day, helping people, but also the joy that I get from using those gifts. So it's, very, it's a very simple answer for me, but it makes sense since I'm the unclutter angel. <laughs> Well, it answer. does. And I mean, <laughs> simple is good, isn't it? Really? We don't have to have, it's a bit like life purpose and things like that. People think they need to have these big uh, ideas are going to save the world or change the world, but it, you know, they might just have a purpose within their own life, within their own home. And it doesn't have to be big as long as you have some purpose there. And I think that, um, you know, keeping it simple does work well with your um, uncluttering uh, <laughs> coaching as well. But it is, we, we don't have to overcomplicate things. So, so that's a, a really good answer. Um, so is there anything else you'd like to add uh, before we, we finish today? No, I think we, we covered a lot. And um, I, I appreciate all your questions. And you know, people that are listening, if they just remember to be easy on themselves and, you know, just take it a step at a time. If you are trying to declutter and make a more simple life, just be easy on yourself. And remember it's, you know, there's no one way to do things. There's no perfect way to do things. It's just what works best for you. So be easy on yourself and I hope they'll come visit me over on my page. Well, I hope so too. And it's been so lovely to have you join me today, Angela. I could talk for hours about this and but perhaps we'll ask you to come back and talk um, about a specific area in, in okay. uncluttering. That'd be great. So if you've enjoyed today's conversation, um, don't forget to visit Angela, I'll be leaving the links to her website um, and also the Facebook group. And uh, if you need a little bit of help getting started, you might have a look at the Unclutter Camp as well, because that sounds like a good way to, to get started on your projects. And if you've also enjoyed the conversation today, perhaps share it with a friend who may benefit from uh, listening to the topic. Uh, don't forget to leave me a review and also uh, subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a conversation. And until next time, remember to embrace and enjoy life every day. Bye for now.